but control. Two years of COVID disruption and then this. Chaos in the travel industry prompted a summons to Parliament for the airlines and the airport operators. For example, is it getting easier to get compensation? Where we are today is much better than we were at the very beginning. Are they giving us an inaccurate picture? I would argue that yes, they are. Charlie Day's plane was overbooked and she was pushed from pillar to post for almost 24 hours. Actually, when we got to the main airport, we were just abandoned and they were like, oh, try and find someone. This is some of the video Charlie took at Gatwick. Her travel nightmare had several costs. You know, the hotel that we had to stay in, the hotel that we didn't manage to stay in, the food, the drink, the entertainment, it was over £2,000 that we lost by not turning up in Barcelona. Not to mention the fact that it ruined the whole weekend that we were supposed to be having in Barcelona because when we arrived, we'd had no sleep. The companies are in a recruitment race after all the COVID redundancies. But did that go too far? So we're now trying to recruit about 6,000 people. You answer my question, Lisa. Do you think there was a connection between sacking 10,000 members of your staff, using aggressive fire and rehire tactics, and now cancelling the most flights per day? Was there a connection between those two events, yes or no? So, look, it's very complicated, isn't it? Because, you know, we right-sized the business at the time. If the pandemic had come to an end, quicker than what we expected, then perhaps the situation would have been different. The union witness said the answer to the recruitment crisis is simple, pay more. And if you've got a flight booked, well, you won't like this. Very quickly, yes or no, will this be fixed in time for the summer? Oliver Richardson. Uh, unless we work together, no. Edwin Stanley. Uh, I would agree with Oliver. R&D. I hope it will be better, but not totally. These are not yes or no's, but I think they're all no's. Um, Danny Brooks. <laughs> no. Taxpayers' money funded massive COVID bailouts for the companies. They are under increasing pressure to now deliver. Simon Viger, 5 News.